statements coming in from the court where uh, Partha Chatterjee and Arpita Mukherjee's uh, custody was to end today and after that arguments were taking place in the court and now the order has been reserved in the case. Both sides fiercely argued and Tamal is now joining us. Tamal, what were the highlights of the defence as well as the prosecution's arguments? Well, uh, yes, three aspects. Number one, Partha Chatterjee. Partha Chatterjee has moved for a bail application, also questioning if there are 31 LICs recovered on the name of Arpita Mukherjee, uh, where Partha Chatterjee has been named as the nominee. How are they technically possible? Because as far as LIC's own guideline and policy, the nominee has to be a relative, has to be own family, and Partha Chatterjee is not Arpita Mukherjee's family, so the maintainability of those LICs cannot be considered. Number two, they are also questioning if there is a deed. The deed cannot be considered to be true by the virtue of it being put forth by the investigating agency. The, uh, the legality, the genuinity of the deed has to, be, uh, ha has to be first established. Now, these had been the argument of Partha Chatterjee while moving this bail prayer, also suggesting that he is 73 years old and that he needs medical intervention. But to counter that, Enforcement Directorate began by saying, quote-unquote, power corrupts, corrupts completely. And then they went on to say that Partha Chatterjee had been so non-cooperative that he first refused to sign on the arrest memo. He first then refused to sign on the Caesar list and named Mamta Banerjee, West Bengal Chief Minister, as his relative on the arrest memo. So E.D.'s counter is, if that doesn't prove his power and influence, what does? Point number two, he, they are also saying, Enforcement Director is saying, there is grave threat perception. I repeat, Enforcement Directorate before the court has now suggested there is grave threat perception for Arpita Mukherjee, that they have specific intent suggesting threat to Arpita Mukherjee. Thus, their prayer before the court had been that yes, they should be both sent to judicial custody, but with regards to Arpita Mukherjee, the food and the water which are provided to Arpita Mukherjee should be first tested and then provided to her. So, Enforcement Directorate has also suggested that it is binding on Partha Chatterjee to prove that the surmounting evidences do not indicate proceeds of crime that involves him. Because our, uh, uh, Partha Chatterjee had been so far maintaining that neither the money has been recovered from him, nor there had been a single case of complaint against him where somebody has alleged that he has either accepted money and the money was received by him. So uh, Partha Chatterjee is saying that, you know, I did not receive the money, I did not demand that money and you have to prove that. If you cannot prove that, you cannot prove my involvement in the crime. They are saying that they are, uh, you know, while crying for absolute innocence. To counter that, enforcement director is saying that it is binding on, he, on him to right. prove because it's a case of PMLA. It is a case of proceeds of crime. Yes. And it is equally uh, the case where LIC has to prove that whether they had flouted their own norms or not. Right. Because enforcement and director... And as has been upheld by the Supreme Court also when it comes to PMLA cases that the burden to prove innocence or guilt lies to prove innocence lies on the person who is accused and not on the agency. We'll see how that matter uh, pans out in the court as well as the order when it is finally pronounced. Thank you, Tamal, for joining us. We take a very quick break.